and welcome to That's So Nova. My name is Nova. Welcome to my channel. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for coming to me again. <laughs> Today we have a very, very special um, tutorial. It is for the September bag of the month and it is the intermediate, beginner to intermediate pattern and pattern and I'm really excited to show it to you. Um, the pattern is from Toby Styles and the bag we're going to be making is the Moana shoulder bag. So before we get started sewing, if you're new to here, I wanted to give you a little rundown on everything. The machine I'm going to be sewing on is a Juki 5550N. They usually use this in factory for garment sewing. But because of my dealer, we came up with the idea of changing the feed dogs to heavy. So when I'm making bags, I can make bags on it. I could change the feed dogs to go light when I'm making garments. I love this machine. If you look at any of my tutorials, most of them, are on this machine. <laughs> um, so I'm going to be using that. I'm using a 9014 organ needle. I'll be using Oxford canvas for my exterior and Kona cotton um, for my interior. With this bag, uh, there's hardware kits. There's hardware kits from Emmeline Bag, Two Minutes to Stitch, um, cereal bag maker and I believe there are some different ones like so hot so like it hot for like UK and other parts of the country and world <laughs> um, so I'm using the the hardware kit from two minutes to stick two minutes to stitch I think that is like the cutest business name by the way because it's 2m2 um, it's really cute so with this you're gonna need two one inch pin buckles two um, eight millimeters magnetic snaps and eight five millimeter grommets. So with that, a lot for this this particular kit, um, two minutes to stitch had the actual grommets that came with it, and I totally went ham when I seen the rolls gold. With that, you can pick up kits to install your grommets at Hobby Lobby's, Joann's, or your local craft stores. This one particular, I think I purchased from Emmeline Bags and it comes with the setting and the little anvil and you just hit it with your little mallet and you got it. Or you can buy a little anvil set also on Amazon. I'm gonna be using, I have a die setter on my um, hand press and I'll be using this and I got my head, my handheld press from Mika and Margo. They're on Etsy, they're a smaller mom and pop shop but they have mini dies and it's, they're one of my favorite companies to purchase from. So I'm going to be using that. We're gonna go over the anatomy of the bag real quickly. This is this gorgeous shoulder bag. The, one of the features is it's one strap that goes all the way around and you're using buckles and this is where you see the grommets. You can adjust where you want the shoulder bag to be off of the grommets and it's like a big adjustment, like eight inches. So I'm a fluffy person and on its lowest setting, it fits really nice underneath my arm and ready to go. If I wanted it lower, I can do that as well. There are a couple features in here that you can add or take away. There, you can have a zipper pocket or you can have a magnetic snap. This tutorial is gonna be with the magnetic um, snap, but I will show you and walk you through what you can do if you want a zipper. It's one step and it's really easy. Um, inside, you're going to have a nice zipper pocket that has a placket and a nice slip pocket. You have the beautiful detail of these pleats, which are absolutely gorgeous. And she gives you tips and tricks in the pattern along the way to make everything great. This, you're only going to be sewing through four layers at the very most of vinyl or cotton or cork, craft text faux leather, you, you name it, you can try it on this. Um, we're gonna be, today you're gonna be following my model and I'm gonna be using cork. That's my favorite substance to use. So I'm gonna put this bag aside. I'll put information for Prim and you can look this up. You can look on Amazon. There's many, many, many um, little things for uh, eyelets. And I guarantee you, once you start using these, you're gonna start seeing it in different bags and you're gonna be like, wow, Toby showed me a new skill that I didn't know. Okay, so we got to it. Um, I, again, I'm using Oxford Cotton Woven for my exterior, Kona Cotton that I purchased from Joann's, and then I interfaced it with DLH 2010 Light, 
it is a it's it's terrible it's compound it's kind of like Shape Flex 101, except the glue dots are like small little dots, so it adheres a little bit faster, and it's just a better grade. And I like shopping from at smaller stores, so I'll have all the links to listed below where I got my machine, what needle I use, what products I purchased, and where you can get alternate products as well. So let's get started on making the Moana shoulder bag. Make sure you definitely have your drinks <laughs> available. Have your water, have whatever you need. We're ready to go. 9014 um, needle I have in, and I'm using Tex 40 Saba thread from Waywack. And I believe the color, because it's like a light baby blue, is 0408. So she describes them on her shoulder bag as a nicely pleated exterior that gives your bag a unique look. It's a function, it has a functional um, inner zipper pocket with a slip pocket and essentially keeps everything safe in the main compartment with a very spacious where you can put your everyday essentials. It has a really classy bag. Um, she gives you how you should print your abbreviations on the second page. On the third page, it goes over how much you need for exterior lining and interfacing, what hardware you need, and any other supplies like fab fabric glue and or double-sided tape. If your machine is kind of reluctant with double-sided tape, you can definitely use wash-away tape that they have at Joann's, or Serial Bag Maker has a lighter tape that is a light hold but it, it's perfect for that moment and you just sew it and you're done <laughs> it's really it's really awesome and for lining you can use wax canvas waterproof canvas quilt cotton but if you're using quilt cotton that's woven you need to interface it with with something and like i stated earlier i use dl dlh 2010 from sew your bag we showed she has the anatomy of the back showing you your main panels, your bottom panels, your handles were adjustables and where the magnetic snap and or if you want a zipper compartment or both. You have all your pieces prepared. If your machine does not like interfaces and she does suggest you to make cut your interfacing one fourth of an inch smaller on all sides so that way your, mach your machine can handle it better if you're using like thicker fabric like vinyl or whatnot. So we have everything we need and we're gonna get started. We're gonna start with the handles. So she gives us measurements for what size we need for the handles. And we're supposed to draw a half an inch draw a half of it a half an inch line on each sort side so I'm using just a regular choco pen and I'm drawing just a half inch line like instructed I'm using a Westcott ruler that you can purchase on Amazon one of the reasons why I use this ruler in pretty much every single tutorial I've ever done is the marks show the little squares all equal one eighth of an inch. So they say if a bag maker says three eighths of an inch, one fourth of an inch, one eighth, it's really relatively easy for me to count how many boxes and I'm, I'm good to go. So we're going to now run double-sided tape along each side or glue um, I sometimes, if I don't have enough double-sided tape, I will use a uh, Magnetac or 809 and glue it and clip it and just wait for the glue to dry. It, it dries relatively fast and then go for it. My machine has no issue on that, on that, that. but if your machine has a little reluctancy, it's a good option. So we're going to sew at a half inch. Um, I'm going to be using a stitch length of 3.5, back stitch well. We're going to trim those tails. We're going to make sure our strap is nice and straight 
match these lines again, add a half inch. Back stitch to the beginning and end. Now we're going to go to, we're going to, you can either glue down or double side tape um, these flat parts. And I'm going to grab some double side tape real quick. And I'm just cutting it with a pair of my thread nippers. They're just, it, it just, it's easier because I used to have a pair of scissors for like each thing, like cutting tape and cutting threads, but yeah, you, they get mixed up and then you just mess up. So what I do is I peel a little bit of the double-sided tape on the other side so it doesn't get caught when I finger press this down. this up a little bit and finger press this down and if you want to if you don't want to finger press you can use a seam roller just to make sure that glue really does stick if you're using cotton or canvas you can just iron it and this is the last side for that not the whole thing, Nova. Got like excited. It was like. All right. So to fold this on in half on each other. And what I usually do is I kind of just use my fingers, fold it even, and just kind of roll seam roller. The seam roller I purchased right here. Um, from Emmeline Bags. I have some, I have one from Serial Bag Maker. I have one from Amazon. It's like one of my favorite things, one of my favorite tools to use. It really does help. Like it gives it like an ironing effect when you can't iron cork and I just like the way it looks and it helps really keep the glue adhere to um, the strap as the glue is trying to adhere to my skin right now. <laughs> I don't know about you, but like every time I use double sided tape and I have nail polish on, it just like takes a layer of it off. And this is a very, this could be a very long process, but I promise you it's completely, utterly worth it. Cause I, because of these straps, I have so many ideas. Like Toby is super creative. If you have a chance, visit her website and look at some of her patterns. She has a very high end, very lush feel. Matter of fact, I will try to make a note of this right now and I will put a link to previous ones I have um, made. I'll put a timestamp and then pop in a card so that you can see previous. Um, yeah, let me, I'll definitely, I need to make a note that with this time so that way I can know when to pop that card in because I think you guys will be, I'll, I think you guys will really like all of her bags. This bag is really classy. All of her bags are. Let me cut the sides to re remove some of the bolt. trash I have a waste basket underneath me but I'll still come out with like double-sided tape threads and what have you okay 
we're almost we're halfway done and this part I know again I know it's a lot of work all worth it when we see the end results we're gonna be like this is amazing just trust the process done but I can take these little bits if you don't have a roller if you have like a bone finger you can just crease it down and it just helps keep the glue adhere the glue to the backing of the fabric. Okay. So once we have this in place, we're going to find our centers and we're going to, I mean, we're going to find each area that has a seam and we're going to fold the strap. So the seam is one eight inch away. Okay. So of course the side wants to pop out now. Okay. So we're going to fold. <laughs> we're going to fold it one inch away from the seam. And we're going to clip to hold. We're going to do that on the other side too. Just make sure it's one inch. So you're just making sure that the seam is one inch down. So the the side has just a nice unseamed finish. And I'm just going to pop some clips. So everything's lined up and nothing's shifting. Then we're going to start, I'm going to move this up out of the way so things don't fly in the middle of sewing. Then we're going to um, sew down one eighth, of a, one eighth of an inch all the way down. I'm using a narrow foot that is one eighth of an inch, so kind of works um, a little to my, to my benefit a little bit. You can use, if you're using vinyl or cork, you can go into, do, we can do a bigger, a bigger stitch, like you can do a four or 4.5 or five, whatever you think is suitable for your machine. I'm gonna, I, recently I've been really, really liking um, short stitches, but that can appropriate your vinyl. So I'm gonna just stick to a 3.5. Because uh, cork is a little bit different. It's a little bit, it's way more forgiving than vinyl. If your machine is like, I'm not having it, um, you can use uh, a Teflon foot. And as you top stitch, don't forget to breathe. I know top stitching is super important. That's what's gonna be shown on your bag, but just take your time. It's not a race, there's no, there's no competition. Take your time and do things that make you feel like you're doing the right thing. If you stop, try to stop with the needle down before you shift. Okay, we're about to get to this edge and I'm going to stop 
top with the needle down. Pivot. And stop with the needle down. I'm kind of loving this gray with the baby blue. I'm just throwing that out there right now. <laughs> So when I go, to, when I have my needle down, I will take, I will crank my wheel so it clicks one time be before the needle rises and that's when I pivot. And for some odd reason that prevents skip stitches for me. All right. And I'm going to trim my threads. we have our nice strap. Now we're gonna start putting some holes in our nice strap. <laughs> All right, so our first hole is gonna be at 8.5. So what I'm doing is this strap is one inch wide. So I'm using the ruler right at the half inch mark and then I'm putting it at 8.5 and from there, that's when I'm gonna make the first mark. Now, um, you can use a silver, like candy leather pen and draw your holes. And it'll sh with the gray, it shows up really fine. You're gonna do, you're gonna do, um, you're gonna do two inches down. Hold on, one second. I'm gonna grab a white real quick. Cause I was going to go every one inch, but this is why you like tiny leather pens and not permanent because you can remove. Okay, so we're gonna draw one hole at the 8.5 and then we're gonna go two inches down to make the next hole. Two inches again and again. We're going to put in four um, holes on each side. I'm gonna do it on the other side. 8.5, first hole, two inches, okay. Now you can do, uh, you can do a drill bit and um, punch a hole that way. I'm going to be using a, my handy dead dandy um, little hole punch. And I'm going to increase the size of the hole so that the punch, the hole won't be too big, but it won't be too small where I'm struggling. And I'm going to punch all eight holes. So I'm going to just grab my my little owl and then I'm just going to push out the excess fabric that my hole puncher did not. 
things are gonna start getting flying, people. It's gonna get real. We're putting we're punching holes. My hole puncher like never punches right. I know I need to get another one, but <laughs> it, it is what it is. And you you work with what you got. all right you really want to make sure your holes are like cleaned up and there's not extra and you're, you're about to see why we're going to take our grommets that are in this bag. And I'm going to open it up and I'm going to take just an area so that they don't, <laughs> I don't lose them because I'm notorious for losing things. <laughs> We're going to take one, the, the mail in, and we're going to put it through the hole that we just made. Hopefully it's big enough. If not, I just have to repunch. And I think I might have needed to go one size bigger. If you have to go bigger, don't, don't fret over it too much because it's better to like, do a little than a lot. Okay. And I'm just going to trim extra, put mail through. And it all depends on your fabric and if your fabric is really stiff and it's not trying to give but you want the hole to be snug if not if it's too big it'll just go through so it's a process but it's worth it in the end And then you're going to take your washer and you're going to put it on behind it. I'm going to grab my, my press and then I put the mail portion down. The washer is on top. And then I'm going to press. And it's like a one easy click. Okay, so with, I'm, we're gonna do a hardware change. I realized that for I messed up on the first rose gold, and then they only, this particular person only put eight in there, and I didn't want to have like seven rose gold and then one antique or one silver. So I'm just gonna change my hardware to antique, same principle. So when you put your this is vinyl, so like you put the mel portion into the hole. You take the female portion that has, um, it has an outside lip and an inner lip. The, the nice finish goes on top. When you press it, this bar curls around, the male part curls around the female part to create this grommet. So uh, let me see, are you, 
Let me see, this is a good angle. So you see the mel's in here on this vinyl, and then and I'm working with cork, it's a little bit of much. And same with vinyl. So I'm just gonna open up the hole. I'm gonna take the mel portion and I slide it into the hole. And I can see the very top of my rib, my uh, grommet. And I'm going to take the female portion, place it on top, and then I'm going to press down and I have my grommet. Now with the hammer one, you would just do, you would do the same principle, except, um, except it will just take a little couple wax to set. See how I damaged that one? I kind of just have, I'm really, I don't like when one, <laughs> one thing is missing. It just, it would make me go bonkers. Okay, so we have our beautiful strap with our five inch grommets. We have eight of them. I'm gonna put this to the side where it won't disappear because we're gonna be needing it later. And now we're going to take get the buckle the buckle connectors so you're going to draw a line down the center of your panel you're going to then use double-sided tape make the panels meet And I'm going to just hit it with my ro like roller so that way it tries to stay as long in that shape as possible, adhering to the glue really well. Okay, so we have our two buckle connectors. We're going to punch a hole at the at 1.5 inches down. So I'm going to grab my ruler. I'm going to find 1.5, find the center, use my little handy pin, just on one short end. We're going to punch a hole. Just have the hole puncher home. It's underneath the paper wicker force. <laughs> so I'm gonna punch a hole. And I'm just going to take a pair of scissors and make sure that the hole is nice and clean and there's no extra material. Okay, and then I'm going to take my buckle. We have two buckles. I'm using this really pretty antique color. This one's from Emmeline. I'm going to feed my buckle through, put my, thread it through the short ends and put it through the prong part and have it like that. Make sure your buckle pin is on going the right direction because it would just be unfortunate if you put it facing backwards. So up through the hole and center. We have those. We're going to put these aside for just right now. And we're going to grab our exterior panels. Okay, so you're gonna get your pattern piece and your main exterior path panel. We're gonna be doing some pleating and it really gives the bag a lot of shape 
and it's just really cute. So I'm using an Oxford um, canvas and it's like a water protection over it, but it's cotton with like some kind of weird water protection. So what I did is on the pattern piece, I cut into the parts that you're supposed to pleat. And so that way it'll be easy to draw the pleat marks in the front and in the back. So we're gonna just make sure those will line up. And on the back, you can draw your pleat marks or you can draw your pleat meds all completely on the back. So what we're going to start is in the center, we're going to take the first two um, pleats, which are marked B and A. We're going to make them become one. We're going to center them. And then we're going to take our pleat and we're going to fold it to the left. If you're using cotton, I would highly suggest the these pens um the pens you sew right over them and it just makes your life a whole lot easier <laughs> we're gonna grab the next pleat that's right beside it you're just going to like bend it so the two lines meet and they're even and then once you have it even you're gonna create a pleat Make sure you draw the lines within your seam allowance. We're gonna take the next two. I find it easier to have the pleat marks on the back because then I can see them folding better. We're gonna draw, do another pleat. And there's one more pleat. And I'm going to put another clip. So when we start on this side, we're going to start with the pleats. We're going to fold them and make them go to the right. Two lines meet, fold over. Take these two lines, make them hug and kiss, <laughs> and then we're going to fold over. We're gonna do the same thing on this side. Make it go to the right, fold over. And we have one more. And we're gonna go to the other side. Side, make it fold over to the right. Once you have all your pleats in and all your clips on, we're going to then baste this down to hold the shape. You already see how the pleats are making it curve in. It's just, it's really beautiful. So I'm going to base these pleats down with using a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. If my threads want to act right. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to mess up a pleat, so I'm gonna hold it, put my presser foot over it, and then just sew. A basting stitch, just one eighth of an inch. Take your time, make sure all the pleats line up. If they fold down, then like a little too much down, what happens, it won't fit into your seam allowance. You're trying to figure out, hey, why do I have a pleat, the, the top of the pleat out of the seam allowance? So just make sure that they're all facing and lined up raw edge to raw edge. Top of the raw edge to the Again, just making sure they all line up. Raw edge to raw edge. Okay, we have this beautiful pleat. Cutting the threads. And I did the other side, same thing. You're just gonna make your pleats. And then if you want to, you can just like, if you have like, uh, you're working with like, uh, something that can't be ironed like waterproof canvas or you have cork you could just kind of finger press your pleats 
a little bit and they'll they'll poke out because now the fabric's shaped like that so it's going to want to go in that the directions you pleated it See? all right we're going to now take these and we're going to match side seam to side seam you, you can pop a couple clips in it And I'm going to just do it real quickly on this side. And we're going to sew this down using a one fourth of an inch seam allowance. Back stitch. I'm at a 3.5 stitch length. Trim your threads. Let's go on the other side and do the same thing. One fourth of an inch seam allowance. Back stitch really well at the beginning and end. Open it up. Because now we're gonna get those buckles that we had on the side, on the side, we're gonna get them now. We're going to put, we're gonna fold this part down and we're going to measure 1.5 inches from the top and this is where we're gonna put our bundle. So I, so just so you can see, I'm going to use a white chalk pen. I'm going to, well, I don't know if you can see the back. <laughs> um, hmm. It's like all my pens are white. <laughs> I don't know, I have this, I can erase it with the water soluble later. So I'm going to measure at the peak 1.5 inches and just draw a little line. So this little brown line is 1.5 and drawing a 1.5 here okay we are going to sew down this i'm going to stick my pen back in here because it wanted to come loose and I am going to use some double-sided tape whatever you have on hand one-fourth of an inch works best but my one-fourth of the inch seems to go in my a a lot so I'm just going to use this three-fourths of an inch real quickly and hope that it doesn't gum up my needle <laughs> And once you have this, you're going to from your mark that you made. Okay, we're going to put that down. And we're going to, you can use glue, double side tape, whatever you want to hold this. We are going to go up. This part is a little tricky, but it's doable. You're gonna go up, across, and down. This is why I'm using a narrow foot so I can get into an area that might be a little bit more tricky. You're gonna to have to get your bag squishy and that's gonna be fine. It'll just, it, it will all come out at the end. And I'm just sewing up and making sure that the panel, the other panel is not getting caught into underneath my feed dogs. It's just this one side. Okay. 
and then we're going to go stop with the needle down and we're going to go across and we're going to have the needle down and you can get a piece of cloth or a piece another um another piece of fabric and to protect your your hardware behind you you can just lay it down so it doesn't scratch it it's tricky but it's very doable this this is the trickiest part to the bag <laughs> and once you got that you're like in the home stretch Okay, we're going to do the other side now, too. Okay, make sure you trim all your threads. You don't want nothing hot in there, so I'm going to get some double-sided tape. Place this on here. You can use whatever you, you can use glue if you wish to. I actually like using it on my. Okay. And then I'm going to put my buckle onto the seam to the one fourth, sorry, one and one half of inch away. Press down the double sided tape. You're gonna move the panel so they don't get sewn together by accident. I did it with my first bag. I almost did it for this bag. <laughs> Just move everything. Needle down when you go across. Needle down when you're about to go down and then take a piece of fabric to protect your hardware. done with the tricky part we're gonna now put the bags wrong side out we're going to sew up the bottom using a one-fourth of an inch seam allowance back stitch And then we're going to box out our corners. I like to have one seam going in opposite directions because it's one fourth of an inch. It's, it'll be really hard. My, 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 I have another one that bit the dust. Um, my um, clip. I hate when they break. So I have one seam going one direction and the other seam going the following the other. So that way it can help minimize the bulk. I'm going to go on the other side. Just like to squish out this little smiley face. Okay. And we're going to go sew at one fourth of an inch. Back stitch well at the beginning of the end.
Okay. And we're going to do the same thing here. Make sure that they're in opposite directions and just give it a go. All right. Turn me the threads. We're going to turn the exterior right sides out. Give it a good look at everything. Poke out the corners. We're almost done. We just do the interior. We're going to put these bad boys together and you're going to be like, wow, see, this bag is already super cute. Now we're going to also, you could take the bottom. You can use, um, I'm using Paltex 71. Or you can use stiff stuff. You can use, you can use anything. Just follow the directions. She's actually using in the pattern. Um, what they use for leather glue and it, it works really well. Um, she suggests you glue down the, the, down the bag pattern. So I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to drop some mag, uh, magnetite, not to release the whole bottle, but just the tip. <laughs> I'm just going to drop some glue. in there and then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to drizzle some glue. And while we while we do the um, interior, this can dry. I'm gonna place this back in there. And I, you can use your seam roller and just kind of roll it out. You can use double sided tape if you want, whatever you feel comfortable with. We're gonna put this on the side for right now because we're gonna start working on the interior if this doesn't wanna slide down magically somewhere. So we're gonna grab one of the interior pieces and we are going to grab our zipper facing. If I can find it. Let's see. I apologize. I thought it was like right on top of it. It's because it's gray and my, my project bag is gray. Typical. We're gonna find our cent our centers. Finding your centers um, helps tremendously in this in this project. Just gonna cut off the excess um, DLH. All right. So I'm gonna find my centers. I'm gonna make a crease. I want to find my centers on my. Um, on my plaque. So what I usually do is I put two clips down, then I just mark it in chalk because I could just, you know, rub it off before I put my double sided tape on it. I'm gonna get my double sided tape. And I don't, I'm like literally struggling to see where did my one fourth of an inch just like disappear to. <laughs> like, I guess I'm, I'm going to have to get crafty with it because I cannot find my double side. There it is. Hello. <laughs> my favorite. There you go. Here's my precious. <laughs> Put the one fourth of an inch double side tape. All right. 
we're going to measure down three fourths of an inch and that's where we're going to place we're gonna go three fourths of an inch down and we're gonna place our zipper facing so I'm going to take double side tape off match up my center marks with the center I have here make sure it's three fourths of an inch triple check, you know, just make sure everything is even as possible. Okay. I'm going to move some stuff around and we're going to sew around this overlay and then we're going to sew around using a one eighth of an inch and leave a towel because we're going to pull this to the back so it can it could be seamless where you're not going to see a back stitch. I always like to start on just one corner. Do not back stitch. I know it's like hard because it's like ingrained in us to back stitch. Take your time. The curves on this pocket is not that hard. They're not like really sharp turns. So you can just slow down your machine, take your time and just round them. See? Just, you'll be fine. And if you do have to stop, stop with the needle down. And we're going to get long tails because we're going to pull these threads to the back. You're going to have two tails. You're going to grab the loop that's in each one. And just bring the threads to the back of We're going to tie these four little threads in knots. And then we're going to tie them off. And you can put a piece of tape or a dollop of glue, whatever is easy for you. You can be double sided tape. We're going to now cut this pocket. pieces off. If you have duckbill scissors, um, I actually think applique or duckbill scissors work really good at cutting this because it has that barrier where you, you can protect not cutting the actual facing. So we have the facing here. We're going to now create our zipper um, pockets. You have two, two pieces of fabric and you're going to take one you're going to take one end and you're going to um, put um, wrong sides of the zipper to the right sides of one side of the pocket and then do the same on the other side. Yeah, you do the same. Then um, you can iron one side down so the 
the wrong sides are touching like you could do it one fourth of an inch and you're going to have the other side meet so you have a nice clean finish so we're going to be leaving the pocket open so we can turn this once we have this um all set up you get your double-sided tape again double-sided tape is your best friend <laughs> and you're going to put it on the right sides of the zipper have the zipper facing where you would like it like the pockets gonna go on it like this but if you like your pulls to going to the left or to the right this is where your zipper head comes in most important so we have it it looks like a pocket like again wrong sides of the tape on the right sides of the lining then you're gonna pull you're going to make sure your double size tape sticks unlike mine um, and then you're going to pull off the, the, the paper on the double side tape and then we're now going to put the zipper on. What I like to do is I like to find the center first of each of the zipper pulls, I mean the, the zipper teeth, and that, then I just kind of uh, lift and shift to make sure that everything looks as even as possible. Okay. You see like, I can feel like the zipper's going down in the slant so I can lift this area and kind of shift it to what I like it to look like. That's the beauty of double sided tape. All right. So we're going to Take the zip we're gonna take the pockets and we're gonna take we're gonna flip them where the pockets the outside and the outside of the pocket are all facing up and towards the center the center so none of your pockets are going to be facing into the lining we want all the pockets right now to face out of the lining see then we're going to take come over here to the machine have long tails and we are going to stitch at one eighth of an inch. Sometimes what I do when I want to have the lines to be exactly perfect, I will mark on the, the edge with chalk, the one fourth of the inch or one eighth of an inch. So that way I can make sure everything meets up nicely. My tail decided to get caught in In okay. move your zipper if you need to and make sure that your again your position is needle down. Do not back stitch, pull long threads. And we're going to take the threads from the back pull the loop once you got it 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 becomes easier so you're going to tie these off i like to tie like four little knots and then put a dab of glue or um a dab of like cut off a small piece of double-sided tape. It's your choice. You fray check too. I, if I have fray check by me, I usually use that too as well. Okay. Pull that through. We tie it off in four little knots. Trim and glue dab. Okay. 
Or you could, some people like to do, like do freight, like burn them with the lighter. You can do that as well. So we have this side down. Now we're going to make sure our lining pockets, both pockets are facing it towards the bottom of the bag. Nothing's up. So like you're going to be opening up your pocket. We're going to start in the corner, go up, across, and then back down. Leave tails because we're going to tie them off. I try to get close as possible to the hole that I left before, but sometimes that doesn't happen. And if it doesn't, it's okay. It's still going to look amazing. Okay. Long tails. Okay, we're going to pull these loops again. If you just tug on the thread, that's the exterior of the loop would just, it just usually comes out. I don't know if I mentioned this in the beginning. I know I said I used Saba thread. It's polyester base. Dab of glue. And I have my back tail and I just tug and the loop comes through and I pull it through with a, a needle. You can do it with an owl. You can do it with pretty much anything, but you can do it with your fingers too. I do that sometimes when I don't have something sharp by me. Dab of glue. Okay. Once that's all done, we're going to um, close up the edges. But like I said, leaving the pocket. open on the bottom. So I try to get as close as I possibly can um, to where the last stitching was. And then I'm going to sew down and I'm going to back stitch a few times because we're going to be birthing. We're going to be, you know, the bag is open because we're trying to make sure the lining and everything fits. On this side, back stitching. Okay. And I like to back stitch over the teeth just for good measure. Okay. So when you open this up, you have a nice pocket with no edges showing. It's absolutely gorgeous. Now we're going to grab our slip pocket and we're going to take take it we're going to fold it in half and we're going to do right sides together and you could just pop a clip or two if you want on the top just to ensure that there's no shifting i'm just going to cut off this excess shape like sometimes i block these and i don't trim as good as i should let's see making sure that's in line and that's the line Okay, we're going to sew right sides, the right sides together, not the opening, but on each side, one fourth of an inch. Make sure you back stitch well in the beginning and the end. Trim your threads. And we're gonna do this side next. We are going to snip at the edge at an angle, so not into your seam allowance. Not in, not in your seam allowance. You want to make sure you don't snip those threads that you just did. So just kind of at an angle. And then we're going to flip this. 
and you can get like a chopstick or um, a boning tool and just poke out the corners with a blunt object. I think that's going to poke through where you're like, oh man, I got to re -sew that. There's a hole now in it. I really like this Kona cotton color. I have no idea what it's. It's like a melony pink. I really like this one. All right. So we have our pocket. Now we're going to grab our trim. I this is one one when, when I started sewing with, um, being a sew like one of the people that sew with Toby. This this idea how she does her trim, I really really like because it looks super clean. So we're going to take we're going to clip this right sides together. So you can use vinyl, whatever trim you want. And we're going to sew one fourth of an inch. Then we're going to press it for it, but see how like clean that looks? We're going to press it forward and we're going to put some clips. And we're going to top stitch at one eighth of an inch. Excess. My scissors are black, so I keep misplacing them. It, they like blend in with the shadows in the room. So I'm gonna cut off the little excess. And then we're gonna grab our other, our last interior piece. And we're going to measure three fourths of an inch. First, I'm gonna find my centers. Always find your centers. Grease with your fingers, and we're going to measure three fourths of an inch. I'm going to find my center with this, and what I'm going to do. This is why I like working with cotton a lot. If you're working with waterproof canvas, maybe you can run a one eighth of an inch DSD around so that it doesn't shift. But I'm going to pop a few pins in there and I'm going to take my name tag, which you can, you can make these on your own computer or you can buy it from someone from Etsy. And I'm going to put it right here so that when you open it up, you can see it. I'm going to actually put it a little higher up here. All right. So I'm just going to double check, make sure everything lines up at three fourths of an inch. See, this is off by one eighth. I can now put the pen in and make sure it's all good. So we're going to top stitch um, around this one eighth of an inch. Now what I do, it's a garment thing. I do, I do, I like to do bar tacks and I'll show you exactly what that is. We're going to start. I like to sew one or two stitches off because this is going to be a, an area of stress. So right underneath this trim, I'm going to flip the bag, do two stitches forward, two stitches back, and that's a bar tack. And then we're going to go all the way down.
Okay, so right, I go all the way up, then I'm gonna go off the trim and back stitch to right where the trim starts. Bar tack, one, two, and go back up and finish it off. Now you can also, another thing you can do is the chicken feet. Um, when you go up, you go back and then you kind of make another stitch going at an angle like a V and that can also actually help really tremendously when you have an area that has, you know, slipping your cell phone on high friction. So we have our slip pocket in and now we're going to, you have to make a choice. <laughs> there on step eight, you can either do the magnetic closure or the zipper closure. And I actually think you can do all three. I love the magnetic closure on here and here's my reason why. One, the kit comes with the magnets. Two, <laughs> um, when it closes, it closes solid and no one's going to be able to stick your hand in there. But I don't know. I just think it looks really classy with it. So I'm going to tell you the steps you're going to do if you need, if you want to do a zipper, but I'm going to be doing a magnetic closure because I just really love how it looks. Let me take these pattern pieces and put them away. So for the, mag for the magnetic closure, there is a pattern piece and it has the little dies. I reinforce that with Decoville light or Decoville heavy or whatever scrap I have. Sometimes I reinforce with, um, with like screw, like little screws <laughs> like I mean not little screws but little pieces of cork so what I'm going to do is take my pen and draw using the washer as a template draw the little markings I need on each one So you're going to use your markings and then you're going to um, puncture a hole, a slit. You can use your scissors or you can use an X-Acto knife, which I might get. And because I'm using the Decaville, it's a little bit more harder for it, but I like the way the Decaville feels um, with magnetics, like I feel like if, especially if the magnet's strong, the pull can really um, deteriorate the fabric and make it come out. I never had a magnet come out, but it can happen, I think. <laughs> okay, so if you were doing a zipper, you would take your zipper head, measure three fourths of an inch down, and you would do it at, you will have your your zipper going at a angle 90 degree angle there's a couple ways you could do this normally i would get a needle and thread and just sew it down on each side or you could take it to your machine and sew it or you i okay i see these people do the burning with the lighter i'm i did it once and i thought it was good but it does take practice and you can burn it and there's going to be markings of where you're going to put the zipper and you can use a uh, strap end or fabric to do your um to quote have your zip have your zipper end but we're going to be doing some magnets you need a set two sets you have your washers okay so i'm gonna move these magnets are super strong and if you have cotton, you can just dab a little bit of glue or fray check where the slits are so that way it doesn't fray. I'm gonna grab the other female piece. Okay. 
just reclaim, come to the slit area, and clean the washer on them. And you can take a pair of scissors, um, any tool you want to bend them down. Oops, not my finger, Shinova. And trust me, it happens a lot. I feel like if I don't injure myself on a project, that it's not really a project. I know you're not supposed to feel that way, but it happens to me all too often. And then I'm gonna grab this, put the meld in. Get the washers that disappear from me. Always one washer. Always just one washer. That's okay. I prepared for this. <laughs> It's always just one that just magically disappears. It's always just one. Okay. And what you can do is tape, tape or duct tape or, um, Sometimes I use DSD too, the double side tape, like the larger ones, and you can just cut and place it over the area that is metal so that way it doesn't rub against your fabric and cause friction in a hole. Just helps with the overall wear and tear of your bag. And as soon as I get up from doing this video, the magical washer will reappear. It, it's magic. Magic. <laughs> so we have that. All right. We're going to put these right sides together, the long edges. We're going to sew them at one fourth of an inch seam allowance. You could pop some clips, pins, whatever you're comfortable with. Find your centers. One fourth of an inch. Back switch at the beginning and end. And if you were doing a zipper, you would install each part of the zipper on the lining piece. If you hear a puppy in the background, that's my dog, Loki, and he does not like not being around people. <laughs> He's with my um, middle child right now, but he likes to be wherever with adults are. Head. Yeah. Then we're going to take this and we're going to press the seam allowance down towards the lining. We're not going up, we're going, we're, the seams are going down. We're going to top stitch at one eighth of an inch and grab these burrs if you are using all cotton you can press it and then top stitch centers, match them, clips, clips. One fourth of an inch.
taking the seam, pressing it down with your fingers. You can roll it if you want, or you can kind of, I call it the pancake method, where you start and then you just continue to press down. I don't know why I call it that. It's just, it's just here it is, people. The magic washer. <laughs> As a song says, one of the magic. Top sippy, top sippy, one eighth of an inch. All right. I like to put my snaps in first. Like snap it together, then we're going to um, sew down the panels at one fourth of an inch. And make sure you back stitch. I'm just gonna. Just like making everything as even as possible. I have a little overhang. And I just want to make sure everything gets caught up in the seam allowance. We're going to, we want to box these corners, but we don't want to have my machine going off without me. Um, we want to box the corners, but we want to leave an opening and we want to leave an opening. So we're going to sew like 1.5 inches in each. You could just draw a line, whatever can help you. You can, you can measure it if you wish. Um, just 1.5 inches in. So you're going to sew and go back. You're going to just have a back stitch. A one fourth of an inch. And then I'm just going to bring my threads over to this side to the line I just made. It just, it, it just helps like where I'm not like holding on to threads again. I'm going to go back forward and back. And we're going to cut off our tails and then Cut off this long tail that I made. Okay. Then we're going to box it the corners like we did with the exterior. Again, I like to have the seam allowance going in different directions so that way it evens the bulk one-fourth of an inch and again if you're like me and you have like excess like your interfacing Try to trim it beforehand so that you're not trying to eyeball eyeball it in like hmm, it might be one fourth of an inch but it has interfacing so okay and we're gonna do this at one fourth inch back stitch at the beginning and end So we have our exterior and our interior and the zipper closure is just the same thing. You would need the 16 inch zipper mark on the ruler three fourths of an inch for, 
and then you're going to do the 90 degree angle like I showed in the beginning and you would install it very similar to the how we did the magnets except you don't have to have the magnets or you can it all it all depends I like how like you can have so many different options okay so now we're going to take the right sides of this bag we're going to put it inside The lining so the lining and the lining and exteriors are going to be right sides together so I'm going to line up the two side seams first and have the the seams go like match but then go in opposite directions so that way it can help reduce the bulk and then I am going to flip I'm going to make sure I have enough clips because they were like flying off I can like a pack of clips somewhere. Right there. Right there. Ah, perfect. Right oh, and for those who not join my channel, the lovely voice you hear in the background is my husband. <laughs> well, hello there. And uh, his name is Kendall, and he helps me with uh, filming and finding my clips and play oh play action yeah or laughing at the fact that i like the, i know the smell of double sided tape you know? <laughs> it's a thing okay so we're just clipping all the way around it the two um like her her bags interior and exterior fit just like really beautiful there's not like trying to work the bag what I'm trying to do now is I'm just making sure that the I'm just making sure that the pleats are going in the right direction and I'm not going to accidentally sew them in the wrong direction. So take your time. I already broke broke one clip. That's that's pretty awesome. awesome. Clips are not safe for me. Okay. Just matching all the center marks. Clipping. Sure, all the pleats are the same. All right, I think I have it. So now we're going to we're going to kind of swish our bag, and we're going to go one fourth of an inch all the way around, um, back stitch at the beginning and end, and just take your time and make sure you're not sewing over a pleat in the wrong direction. I know that sounds weird, but just really focus on the inside of your bag. And look at the pleat direction if you see in here I have my I can see one fold and I'm just not going to make sure it goes the opposite way I'm going to just let them go the way that we originally did and that's why basing is super important in the beginning so back sets the beginning in and let's go if you have to stop stop with the needle down Make sure every pleat is in there. There goes another clip. <laughs> I need stock and clips. 
like a never ending supply or because I I have a tendency of just like you usually get some almost every month. I know. You want to make sure raw edges, the raw edges, every pleat is caught in the seam allowance because again, when we do the bags right sides out, you don't want to be like, hmm, why is there a pleat poking out or why isn't this not one caught in the seam allowance? awkward um thing because you really have to focus that making sure your pleats are in getting caught in the seam allowance because what happened is last time i turned my first back i had one pleat poking out and i was like okay i did something wrong okay so we are going to now turn the bags right side out um what i did last time i kind of snipped into the the curved part so that way it's not as bulky when you're trying to have it sticking out. The rest of it does need to be trimmed because again it's a one fourth of an inch seam allowance. You're going to pull out your bag from underneath the lining. And I like for just good measure I just like to poke out all the corners. You can use a chopstick, whatever you have handy, that will be good for you. And I'm going to push in the lining real quick. Make sure everything got caught because if it didn't, then this is when we need to uh, okay. if it didn't, then this is where you need to like, okay, I need to turn it right back sides out and catch this part. You fold you to fold it in. I'm just throwing some clips in it before I close up the bottom of the lining. Making sure corners are nice and clean. We're folding it over like one fourth of an inch so that way the pleats are really being seen. I'm just clipping it. the outside of the bag we're now going to take the zipper pocket that's open and we're going to pull the lining in from the pocket now we're going to close up this lining using one fourth of an inch seam allowance Or if you want it a little tighter, you can do three eighths of an inch. Um, it's really your discretion. Back stitch at the beginning and end, and just make sure all raw edges are aligned. Man, this cotton is like pretty. <laughs> I was telling Samantha 
that the other day when I was making the other one, the cotton I was using was running really bad too. And I, ha I was like, it has to be me. She's like, no, that sometimes that happens. So, okay. Again, we're, we're folding this, oh, we're folding the entire top edge over by one fourth of an inch. Trying to give it a nice and clean look. So I'm just rolling it with my fingers and popping some clips in. And this is, this, when you do this top stitching, because we're almost done. We do the top stitching and we're going to put the, um, a line, put the ba um, bag butt on it. But when you do this top stitching, you either need to trust your um, tension on the bottom of your machine, or you're going to have to get <laughs> crafty with this. There's a couple ways you can do it. You can turn the bag inside out and then you can so you can see the lining i mean you can see the top of the bag uh, the exterior or you can go inside like here and just trust that your stitches are going to look good on the outside like your your tension's on point or you can because it's a wide mouth you can kind of position it up and go all the way around i am going to push it down and i'm going to top stitch by um going from lining out and I'm also having my, my threads matched incredibly <laughs> incredibly well so let me hold this up get everything out of the way okay and then I'm going to start in uh, where the seam is and that's where I'm going to back stitch And I'm just going to take one clip off at a time. And so, I, I don't know, it sounds like my machine is not having it. I'm making sure that there's no bird nest. I hate when that happens. machine is not having it right now. It's not a really bulky seam. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah, I'm getting a bird nest. Let's see. I'm going to cut the bird nest and figure out what are you doing, machine? Take my bobbin out, check it. Okay. You you don't actually have to top stitch because the way it is, I'm going to sew up this pocket real quick at one eighth inch so I can test the tension on this before I try to top stitch again. usually cut a little angle into the excess seam in the zipper so that way it doesn't poke out. Okay, trimming the threads. Hope 
getting that pocket back out. Push the lining in place. Okay, you, I top stitched. You don't technically have to top stitch. Um, you, when you're at this stage, you're pretty much done with the bag. The bag lines up like this. Um, you can top stitch at one eighth of an inch. I'm sorry, I'm just pulling those excess threads that were kind of acting weird on me. I'm going to top stitch just so you can see. You don't have to. Actually, it looks better when you don't because then the pleats just look more natural. But let's start top stitching just for sake. I'm going to do one eighth of an inch back stitch at the beginning. Of The magnets, they automatically want to, like, come together. So just be cognizant of that. Be aware of your your handle. Okay. Whoa. Okay, that sounds because the metal, my buckle was hitting it and yeah, you can't do that. So, one second, make sure you, you're, you're cognizant of your magnets and your buckle and you'll be okay. It's because you're only going through a few layers and again, you don't even have to top stitch. It, it's just something I'm like prone to do and I... I like it because I feel like it, it's another row of stitching for the pleats. Yeah. Okay. Trimming threads really well. Trimming threads. Okay. Again, when you're, if you're going to top stitch, which you don't have to, just be cognizant of your, um, your hardware, your buckles. Okay. Then I'm going to grab this strap. I'm going to feed it through. Ooh, sorry. Feed it through. And I'm going, I like, just for show, I'm going to use the last buckle, I mean grommet hole, and then stick it through. I'm going to do this again. It's just like a belt. Together and ta -da, we have a good, fabulous Moana. We have a beautiful cork strap with this Oxford water. It's like I can't, it's not waterproof canvas, it is literally cotton with like a coat of like waterproof on it. Um, I got it as a gift a, of a gift exchange like three years ago, and I haven't used it, so I'm like really excited to get it because it came from the UK. I have no idea where the fabric is. <laughs> like I just know it's an Oxford. Um, we have this buckle. We have these beautiful grommet details. It just gives it a real professional look. Then inside, we have a zipper pocket and a slip pocket. I still need to cut a thread off of a zipper pocket, so you can put your phone, what your monies, whatever. And we have a nice slip pocket. 
I chose the magnetic closure because when you see it, it closes all the way. So um, I love it. You could, again, there's the option of having the zipper and there's also the option of having both. So this is the bag. It's very spiffy and very elegant and it's ready to go. Something very unique. I, I never put pleats in a bag like this before and I'm really excited about it because it just makes my mind go wild. You could, again, put a zipper in here. You can add more pockets. You can do a lot of different things if you wanted to. Um, where before you install this part, you can put a grommet, not a grommet, a rivet right here so that it doesn't move and it's an extra piece and just maybe put like a fabric washer or something to reinforce it on the other side because it's going to be visible. So like maybe for me, I would get cork and punch a hole and put it on the other side and it can be an extra reinforcement. But to be honest with you, it absolutely doesn't need it. These, so you can do small modifications that like you really, really like to put it on here. Like let's say you wanted to keep the open ends, you could put strap ends on here. There's like a million ways you can do this. What if you, you could, instead of using um, magnets, what if you use 24 line snaps? Or what if you use cam snaps? There's so many different ways. I can even see for like someone that was like, hey, I just want easy access, like putting Velcro on those things and having it. There's so many, the possibilities are endless. And this is a really nice bag. And I think it would do well at craft shows, as gifts what have you. So we just made the Moana together and I enjoyed the journey. You've seen me almost so over hardware. You've seen me miss hardware. And this is a truly how I function. There's <laughs> no editing my mistakes. So hopefully my mistakes will be your like victories and it'll be awesome. So if you're not a part of the bag of month, I'm going to have the link for it down below where you can join and you can get three wonderful patterns in, in a three month span. One in August, one in September, one in October, and three different designers who are absolutely brilliant. I'm gonna put that information. I'm gonna put Toby Styles information for her Facebook page so you can join, as well as the Bag of the Month Facebook page so you can show off your wares. And if you can hashtag the Moana bag or hashtag Toby Styles patterns, and you can see all the other people that make this bag too. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. I'm more than willing to answer anything. I'm gonna put everything I use today in the description box. If for some other reason I forget, just say, hey, where did you get that thread again? Or where'd you get that ruler? I will be more than willing to answer it. So if you can like, subscribe, comment, and hit that notification button, share if you think this video is worthy, it truly helps me out. Until the next time I see you, happy sewing. Bye.